Hi, Dr. Green. Hey, good morning. Your staff has 60 questions to ask you. Do you have a few minutes? Sure. What, how do you describe yourself in three words? Tenacious, energetic, and funny. Well, we look forward to you being funny. I hope not to disappoint. What's your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby, digital photography. What's your go-to karaoke song? Mac the Knife. What's your favorite band? Chicago. What is your favorite superhero? That would be Francis Collins. <laughs> do you have a secret talent? I do. It's secret. What? I don't know, it's secret. Give us a hint. Can you give us a hint? Uh, it's secret. <laughs> well, we're gonna walk out here because Devonna has one question for you. Okay. And do you have any nicknames? In college, a lot of people called me Ledoux. Hey, Dr. Green. Hey, good morning. Good morning. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, that would be, be serious in what you do, but don't take yourself too seriously. Thank you. Sure. What advice would you give your, to your younger self? Take a statistics class. What's your worst habit? Meticulous editing. What do you find yourself doing a lot these days? Email, and a lot more email. <laughs> what do you do on your days off? Uh, I catch up on email. <laughs> What's something you'd like to say to your social media followers? I hope you're enjoying my tweets because we're working hard at them. <laughs> we sure are. What's your favorite thing to eat? Lasagna. Dessert you can't live without? Baklava. Who do you look up to most in life? Probably sort of a combined person that reflects some of the key mentors I had in my life starting in high school up to the present time. And I think Prabhupada here has a question for you. Oh, yeah. hey, good morning. Hey. Um, what is one of your favorite places to visit in the world? Africa, almost any country in Africa. Nice. Um, what's something that you truly cherish? I have an autographed baseball bat that Alex Rodriguez gave me. No way. It's in my office. Yeah. Wow. And what's one thing that you could never like live without? One thing I could never live without. Wi-Fi. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Green. So what have you learned from the people you look up to? What have I learned from the people I look up to? How to be kind and how to be helpful. Oh. Fictional character you'd want to spend the day with? E.T. <laughs> A movie you could watch over and over again. That's hard because there's two Mel Brooks movies I could do that to. Either History of the World Part 1 or Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Not Part 2? There isn't a part two. <laughs> well, that's anticlimactic. So where are you from? St. Louis. What do you miss most about St. Louis? My parents. Aww. So I think Kim here has a couple of questions for you. Who has questions? Kim. Kim. Right over here. Oh. Hey, Kim. Hi, Hey, good morning. Hi, fine. I was wondering, uh, what instruments can you play? I can play trumpet, or I once could play trumpet. I was a piano player, uh, and I'm a little bit of a hacky kind of drummer. So what's your favorite song to play? On Wisconsin. And what was the name of your band in medical school? The Hot Docs. Cool. So what's the best thing that happened to you in 2019? 2019, oh well, I hired this really terrific new communications director. You should really meet her sometime. <laughs> well, I hope she's all she's cracked up to be. What are you looking forward to in 2020? I am looking forward to completing the Institute's strategic planning process and publishing our new strategic plan in October. Oh, I think Mike over there had a question for you. Mike had a question? Morning, hey, Mike, good morning. How are you? Hey, pretty good, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, so uh, when did you realize you wanted to work in the field of genomics? That would have been in uh, 1988 when I decided what I was gonna do for my postdoctoral training. Okay. And uh, what advice would you give to aspiring students aspiring to study in genomics? I would tell them to be sure to get really good training in data science and computational biology. Okay, that's great advice. And uh, where would you like to see genome research in the next 10 years? I would like to see genome research really changing the practice of medicine over the next 10 years. Thanks. So what's your favorite thing in your office? That's hard. It would either be my Barack Obama autographed photograph, or it would be a sign I keep above my door that is a quote from Albert Einstein 
that says if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research. Oh, are you sure that wasn't Ben Franklin? Well, <laughs> supposedly it was Albert Einstein. <laughs> That's what the internet said. So what's your favorite gene? The cystic fibrosis gene. Hmm, what's your proudest professional moment? Um, being named NHGRI director by Francis Collins in front of the entire institute. Hmm. And what chromosome did you help map? Chromosome seven. Why chromosome seven? Uh, uh, there were a variety of reasons. Uh, we didn't want to pick anything too small and we didn't want to pick anything too big because we didn't really know what we were doing. So we picked something in the middle. <laughs> Should I get my genome sequenced? I would say as of today, you should only get your genome sequenced if you have a medical reason to do so. Have you had yours sequenced? I have not. Why not? Because I haven't medically needed to yet. Oh, what do you think they'd find? If they sequenced my genome, they would find about six billion G's, A's, T's, and C's in precise order. Hmm. Do you think they'd find any secret superhero powers? No, I'm not that interested. Can you play La Bamba? No, not readily. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest challenge about being the director? The biggest challenge about being the NHGRI director is that if you're doing a really good job, someone's really pissed at you at any moment in time. What's the best part about being the director? Is occasionally feeling like it's good to be the king. <laughs> Dr. Green, I think McCool has a question. Hey, McCool. Hey, Dr. Green, what is your favorite place to come out in St. Louis? Bush Stadium. And what would your dream job be? I wish I was a good enough baseball player to play professionally. So what's one thing you still have from your childhood? Oh, I have this massive collection of thousands of things that I just can't throw out because I'm really sentimental and so I keep a lot of memorabilia. And so you're a little bit of a pack rat. I am a little bit of a pack rat. Do you have a history team to take care of that problem? Well, they help me at work because I'm also a pack rat at work, but they don't help me at home. No comment there. And your life, if your life was a song, what would the title be? Celebration. Oh, I bet there's a dance to go with that. Who's a historical figure you'd love to have coffee with? Charles Darwin. How do you think he takes his coffee? I bet he takes his coffee black. How do you take your coffee? I take it with a little bit of milk and some Splenda. Oh. Mm, how, what do you love to have on your pizza? Black olives. Oh, black olives. Nothing else? If I'm allowed a second topping, I'll throw in mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms. Controversial. So uh, can you tell us a quick fun fact about genomics? The word genomics was coined in 1987. You would not find that word in the scientific or medical literature before 1987. And why is that? Because nobody had thought it up and nobody had put it into print. Good morning. Hey, how are you? What's the best way to decompress? Uh, these days, the way I decompress is I watch reruns of The Big Bang Theory and Shark Tank. Cool. Sort of mindless, but sort of fun. Okay. I could take that. Okay. Thanks, Yasmin. So what were you most surprised to learn working in genomics? Um, probably out of all the surprises in genomics was when we realized that the number of genes in the human genome is actually smaller than the number of genes in most of the ingredients of a typical salad. Because those plants actually have more genes than we do. Uh, Caesar salad? Oh, any kind of salad. What's the, what was the best part about working on the Human Genome Project? I would say being part of something historic. What was the hardest part about working on the Human Genome Project? I would say realizing that you are part of something historic, and with that comes a, an, an amazing and challenging amount of responsibility. Speaking of which, how do you feel about starting a Twitter account? I enjoyed starting a Twitter account, although um, I sort of realized it was probably a good thing to do because I was turning 60 years old and some of the other riskier things I could have done, with, like jumping out of airplane, just didn't seem appropriate. Not yet, right? No, not ever. What career goals would you still like to accomplish? I would say, the one thing I haven't figured out in my career is what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> what is the field of genomics really like? Well, the field of genomics is a lot like the field of dreams, except instead of corn plants, there are these long double helices of DNA. Hmm, like a field of genes. Like a field of genes. Last question, so I have this pain in my leg. What do you think it is? I think it's a proof that you really do have feelings. Oh, well, on that note, Thank you for your time today, Dr. Green. Happy to do it. Take All care. All right. Bye-bye.